HyperDocs, How-Tos and Tips for Teachers. Erkund is today's sponsor. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn about Erkund's plagiarism prevention abilities and how you can have a free trial for the end of this school year. Simply use the code COOLCAT to get a whole month free of Erkund. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we have Lisa Scumpiero, who is a 10th grade English teacher from Maryland, and we're talking hyperdocs. Lisa, what are hyperdocs? Uh, hyperdocs are either normally a doc or slide that you build for the students. Um, they give an ability for the students to work collabor- collaboratively. Uh, they can then work through the topic or problem at their own pace. And you can give them choices within it so that they can evolve around that central question or concept or problem. Okay, so how is this different from a normal just doc? Is it that you're giving them an assignment? You're giving them an activity? Are you making are they making templates from it so they each have their own personal copy? What's it like? Well, usually what they do is when somebody builds one, you have the um, introduction for the students. It gives them some background information. Uh, When I used to teach it, I used to almost do the same thing I do in a hyperdoc in a lesson. I would give them some background information. Sometimes in the hyperdoc, then you can do like a flip classroom type of thing where they can access the hyperdoc. They watch something prior to coming to class and then they can do something with it. They can reflect on it. Um, They can prepare some questions for the actual class. And then when the teacher has them go through the hyperdoc, they're basically walking them through the learning process. For my type of teaching now, I don't do a lot of stage on the stage talking the entire time. I walk around and I make sure that they don't they're not confused. They don't have questions. But I'm more of a facilitator, making sure that they understand what's going on. And that hyperdoc helps them through it because it goes from where they're beginning to just be introduced into the topic. They delve into the topic. And we even have things at the end of hyperdocs usually that are extensions. So I le- use a learning management system and I'll right. have these big, these long pages and I have to. Th- so is it almost like somebody's using Google Classroom and the doc is like a page or a web page you would have in your LMS or... Are kids actually editing and writing on the page? They can edit and write on it. What I do is in Google Classroom, I will give them the hyperdoc and then I will make it a copy for each student. And then they're able to access the material that I want them to maybe, let's say, on the left. And then on the right, they have an opportunity to either take notes or reflect or with the hyperdoc, what's nice is you have all the things hyperlinked for the students. So they're only going to one doc, but everything is hyperlinked. The videos, the other activities they have to do, the choices that they have, whether they do an iMovie or a Flipgrid or they go to a GoFormative, everything is in one so that they see the process and where it's leading to and they see the end before they get to it it, um, so that they feel a little bit more confident about what they're doing. So can you give me an example of a recent hyperdoc lesson? Yeah. So today I teach 10th graders and they had a narrative that they are writing and I made a hyperdoc for them to make it easier for them. I told them that we were going to madman write, which is just writing really quickly something down for 15 minutes and seeing if that's going to be your narrative. And I had the the link for them to know what a madman writing was. And then I had uh, what dialogue looked like. I also had uh, the rubric that I was going to use, but I showed them today and tomorrow they're, they're writing, but then on Monday, they're going to peer edit. And I showed them the entire thing and told them, if you want to go in and see what the peer editing looks like so that you know where you're going to go with your writing, you know, nothing is a mystery. Everything is there for you to look at and see where you want to go with this. 
totally agree with this. You know, one click, everything should be right there. Kids should never have to hunt for it. They shouldn't have to navigate for it. It should just all be right there. Now, you're excited about how HyperDocs and this interactivity is being built into other tools. Give me some examples. I use it in Docs and Slides, but I also use it in Google Sites. I've done it for a digital breakout with kids. I had them read a story that was a mystery. And then they had to like crack codes and figure out everything. And it was fun. And I'm building one right now on a Google site for students where they're going to have each page is going to be something that they can go to if they choose. There's going to be choices. So if they choose to go to the next part of the adventure, then they'll go to that page. And so it will sort of build out on that Google site. Uh, Also, Flipgrid, it is um, evolving so that teachers, when they create their grid, they can embed docs in there. I've embedded entire hyperdocs in there so the kids can access the hyperdoc as they're on Flipgrid. Uh, You can embed video. Uh, You can also embed images or even like a prompt in there so kids are being steered in the right direction. So you just don't have to have everything on your board. I used to have kids like take a picture with their phone or their iPad on the board of what they were supposed to do for Flipgrid that night. And they didn't have to access that at home. Now, when they go home to do their Flipgrid, they have all of the directions right there. So, Lisa, is there a mistake that many educators make when they start using HyperDocs? When I started making HyperDocs, my mistake was I tried to do it from scratch. Uh, I didn't really look at any. I looked at some and said, okay, I think I get the basic premise. Let me start from scratch. And when I made my first one, it was for Great Gatsby. And I did it with my students. And it was like maybe two and a half years ago. And I remember they were like looking at me like, wow, you know, this is a lot to do. We did it for two days. They were very impressed with it. But then they also said, you know, this was a lot for for us to do. And they gave me some suggestions. And then what I did the next time is I started looking at some. Uh, Lisa Highfield, she has a wonderful HyperDoc site. Um, I also use my Google Keep and anything that is shared out on Twitter with HyperDocs. There's Padlets and all kinds of stuff. I put it in my Keep and then I look through them. And I'll sometimes make a copy of them, strip them from what they have, and then work from, because I like the layout or I like how it looks. So you've given us the suggestion to look at other examples. What is the most wildly helpful suggestion you have for teachers who want to use HyperDocs? I would say make sure when you use HyperDocs that you are okay with failing forward because the kids might need a little bit of help. This year, what I did prior to even doing a hyperdoc with them is we did a hyperdoc together. I said, what do you think this thing that's underlined in blue is? And they're like, a link. Uh, Some classes, it was dead air. And I was like, this is a link. And we actually did a hyperdoc together. And that gave the students the comfort level that they needed. So I would say, make sure that the kids are comfortable. Don't expect it to be perfect the first couple times because they're getting accustomed to it. But eventually they'll appreciate the extra effort that you're making. Last question, Lisa. Some people have to go to their administrators or curriculum directors and convince them that it is worth trying something new. What is the elevator pitch for why educators should be using HyperDocs? Well, I think educators need to use HyperDocs because the whole thing in our building is the UBD, like design plan, designing with something with the the end in mind. I've even HyperDocced all of my units. I make sure that I know where I'm going with everything. I HyperDoc all the ancillary materials I'm going to use during that unit. And it just helps me see the end in mind plan for a purpose and be able to see where I'm going with the students. Well, educators, we have something new to try for this EdTech Tool Tuesday. Hi for Docs. Check the show notes and take a look and tweet out your HyperDocs so that we can all share. Today's sponsor is Erkund. Erkund is great as a plagiarism prevention tool and connects with most common learning management systems like Google Classroom, Moodle, or Canvas. 
or as a standalone web tool or by email. Students just turn in work. Then the teacher has a paper analyzed by Erkind. The Erkind system is highly accurate, cost effective, and even better, doesn't sell licenses to students or others. Just teachers can use the power of Erkin. So if you use another text similarity detection tool, or if you haven't used one yet, now is the time to start your free trial at coolcatteacher.com forward slash detect or coolcatteacher.com forward slash Erkund. That's spelled U-R-K-U-N-D. And learn more about Erkund today. And remember, use the code COOLCAT to get a whole month free. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.